Hey everyone, good morning, happy Tuesday. Welcome to the Teach Better Today morning show where the Teach Better team gets to join you live every single morning, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern. I am so excited to bring our friend Tim on the show. I'm sure you know him. He is very active in our Teach Better family. But if not, this will be definitely an educator that you want to add to your professional learning network because Tim has a lot to share and he's a really, really interesting guy. I cannot wait for you guys to connect with him and, of course, connect with this podcast. We will be right back. Everyone, good morning. We have Tim with us this morning. Tim, how you feeling? Feeling awesome. I'm all jazzed up after that cool intro. I love the music. Oh, it's always so fun to get a little ditty in the morning, like to listen to the music and jam out. Yeah. Somebody just yesterday I was talking to was talking about how much they liked the music selection for our courses over at teachbetteracademy.com, which I'm thrilled that yeah, all yeah. of you enjoy the the music, but now I feel like that's that puts pressure on us. I'm like, ooh, you know, we have a course coming out you know, again, in a, in a little bit, what's the music going to be like for that one? Yeah. Is that, is that Jeff on the guitar? Dun, you know, I wish it was. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. That's he Jeff. could really jam it out and like chat on the drums would be cool. I think it'd oh, be yeah. a thing. Yeah. You could do the tambourine. Oh, sure. Or the triangle. I'd be really good. Or the cowbell, more cowbell. Oh, <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Yeah. That's awesome. See, It'd be so good. Tim, for our community here who may not be familiar with you, do you mind sharing a little bit about who you are and what you do in education? So I'm a I'm a teacher in Langley, British Columbia, uh, west coast of Canada. And I teach junior science, senior chemistry, and astronomy. It's a, it's a unique course I've developed on my own. done it for about 20 years. In fact, this is my 31st year of teaching. So I, I've been doing this for quite a while. Uh, you know, I'm a teacher now. And um, I, I also have this cool opportunity. I go out to uh, local feeder schools, like the middle schools, and I do interactive kind of um, connection work with, with the teachers and their classes. Like even, for instance, yesterday, we were out with a grade seven class walking through the woods. I did a little nature walk. We talked about trees and the uh, carbon cycle and the nitrogen cycle. And so I have a lot of fun just being able to go to local schools as sort of like the, the guest lecturer sort of thing. So it's a lot of fun. I love it. I love it. You also have a podcast that our viewers here should subscribe to because I know a lot of people are watching on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, and LinkedIn this morning, but it's possible they're also listening on Teach Better Talk podcast. Tell us a little bit about that project. Yeah, the podcast called Science 360, it's got one main purpose, which is um, to bring science teachers in particular uh, new ideas, new topics, really up-to-date research I bring lots of guests on. And honestly, I get guests that I don't know. Sometimes I think I've got no business getting these guests because these are some top end people who uh, are cutting edge in their field. And they bring perspectives on science education that what, what I hope is teachers will listen and go, wow, that's really interesting. I'm going to now go and teach this to my classes. And uh, so it sort of freshens up your science delivery and your content and makes it learning uh, sort of relevant. And, and the students get really excited about hearing these new things. I love that. You know, I feel that way about our guests very often here on the Teach Better Today morning show. We get to interview everyone from, you know, big names that are globally known to teachers who may be only well known in their school building. And it just gives me such a such a blessing of being able to hear such a diverse lineup of stories and everything else. But I want to encourage everyone here to go subscribe, rate and review Tim's podcast it, as very easy for you all to get access to it. It's over in our Teach Better Podcast Network. So That's you right. can head over there, teachbetterpodcast.com to get access. And then, of course, you can do all the subscribe button clicking on whatever podcast right avenue you'd like to listen. Five stars. Yeah, five stars is always great. I always joke. I'm like, head over there, give us a five-star review. And if you have anything less than a five stars, keep, keep your opinion to yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I do my best to bring good content and and it's not just science. I, I do try to share a lot of kind of teaching perspectives and sort of philosophy of what is it like to be a teacher? What does it mean to be a teacher? And I can't over help but think how as a teacher, we just have this glorious opportunity to influence the future. And we have this fun opportunity to have these kids in front of us and just 
fill them with positive thoughts and ideas and hope for their future. And uh, there's lots to, in the science realm that uh, we could we could jump off of that theme with. I think it's a really beautiful opportunity to have conversations that not only enrich a specific content area, but also can be added to other areas of expertise. If educators don't teach science, they're still going to find these interviews to be interesting because there's always ways to adapt different learning strategies to different content areas. Absolutely. The whole idea of this interesting that we're, we're lifelong learners, right? So I love learning about any field. I don't just learn about science, but I love learning about things. And I think the people that come on have some really fun things to talk about. Very interesting. And now all of a sudden, maybe you don't teach science, but you'll still find it interesting. Yeah, no, definitely very cool. You know, Tim, I want to get into the type of support that you provide educators, not only in your podcast, but also just through being in the trenches and working with educators on a day-to-day basis and students every day to support the cool things going on in education. So we'll be right back to ask you some good questions. with us here on the Teach Better Today morning show. We have Tim with us. And Tim, I would love to start off our conversation asking you to share a little bit about the piece of advice you think would be really helpful for educators right now. February is a very challenging time in education. I always joke that it's a, a challenging month, just like I think October is a challenging month. What's something that we can leave our teachers with this morning to get them thinking about reaching all of their learners? Well, and actually, that that's key right there is is you are reaching all of these learners, and there will be times through the school year when you think I'm not, and it, it gets a challenge. I, I was just in a classroom the other day with a, a grade seven teacher who I'm I'm mentoring, and she's just been challenged. Uh, she's pulling every trick out of her bag to try and help these kids move forward, and she feels like giving up at times. And and I said, you know, honestly, but. Th- but look at this one boy, because as we were standing there talking, this one boy walked into the classroom who she taught last year and was her toughest student. And he came back just to say, hey, um, how is it going? And, and share with him, her some of his wins. And I said, look, that was your toughest kid last year. You thought you weren't getting through to him, but you did. And you don't see it right now, but you might see it in a year. You might see it in five or 10 years. So it's sort of like we're always challenged. We're always pushed by these young kids, but they they they're listening and and you just don't know when they're going to come back and and let you know that and maybe they never will but um you're doing good work everyone's doing good work you do your best you keep excited you roll with the punches allow the kids to let their energy flow don't battle them uh but just go with them and and uh, you are making a difference Mm, i think that reminder is so powerful we were reflecting katie miglin and i the other the other day and kind of had this moment to remind us that sometimes we have a million wins throughout the day, one thing goes wrong. And that's the element that we take home with us that, you know, keeps us up at night and we have a nightmare about and, you know, we struggle to to get off of our minds when we're eating dinner. And it's really interesting as educators, we put so much heart into this field, we have to also be celebrating the wins. And it could be the wins that thing just things just like flowed smoothly for the day. Or it's a big win, like a, st- like a student that you're working with had an aha moment. And how exciting is that? So I feel like we always need to keep that at the forefront of a skill that we're working on as educators. Yeah, 100%. And, uh, and it's also good to have a circle around you, a network, uh, whether it's at home or in, in the school, in the hallway, and just to be open to community and just allowing people in your, find your people, you know, in your school, find your people that you know are going to lift you up. Uh, Not the complainers, uh, they're there too, but hang around these people that you can sort of share stories, commiserate a little bit, laugh a little bit and say, you know what, I I had the exact same experience and and, uh, I can totally relate, but you know, we're going to be okay and those kids are doing better and they're going to get better and just keep doing what you're doing. 
You know, I consider you to be a very connected educator. You're constantly trying to network with people, make make connections for others. And obviously, you've put yourself in a number of different networking building opportunities, not only yep. with the work that you're doing just as an educator eager to connect with people, but you're also part of our podcast network and other things that are related to teachbetter.com. Any suggestions for educators who want to build that positive community around them, but maybe either haven't been able to give it a focus or don't quite know where to start because they're not seeing it maybe right in front of them with the teachers across the hallway? Well, there's there's so many networks around. They can be small. They can be large. I mean, for instance, the Teach Better team, I, I kind of stumbled across probably four years ago. And uh, I just I took the bold move of just sort of connecting or reaching out and asking a couple of questions. I sent an email maybe and and it kind of grew from there. But had I not done that, I don't know that you guys would have found me because I don't I didn't have that same presence. But I reached out to you and, and I would encourage teachers to have that courage to just reach out and it could be to someone like teach better team it could be someone across the hallway but without a doubt teaching can't be an island profession you've got to have this sort of grouping of people that that can be there to support you and and when you do you find that uh uh now you 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 kind of get excited about possibly encouraging people or or saying the right thing to help somebody you know what they say about longevity that the two things that um are, are most connected to a long and healthy life. And one of them is, um, is community. Is Do you have a strong community? The second actually most common uh, is thing associated with longevity is generosity. So it's interesting that it's not exercise necessarily, it's not eating well and getting enough sleep, but the two most prominent factors of longevity are connectivity and generosity. And then make sure you exercise and eat well and get your sleep. Sure. No, of course. I mean, geez, I feel like we could all use an extra hours, hour of sleep every so often, but yeah. I love the, the note on generosity as well. I think as educators as well, we have a, a lot of moments to be generous and it's not always about being generous with your money, like generous with your time, generous with your happiness, generous with your positivity, generous with your patience, right? These are just opportunities to give to others. And Oh, I feel like that's a really good opportunity for us here on this Tuesday morning to maybe challenge our community to be aware of when we're being generous with the day ahead. And it really can be generous with something that is is a characteristic that you're you're always giving to others and just celebrating that generosity that you are intentionally providing is is important. And it might might add some years to your life as well. Ooh, that would be so good. More live shows for us to enjoy together. Yeah, exactly. More healthy years. <laughs> exactly. Tim, I do want to make sure that our community can connect with you. You're doing so many good things. You're a wonderful guy. And I want to make sure that our community adds you to their PLN. How can our community here stay connected? Well, you know, obviously, uh, my podcast is is always there. I, I try my best to keep it pretty regular. I, I've just I've just released my 91st episode. So there's lots of titles, lots of just scroll through them and find a title that you think, oh, that might be interesting or or I'm teaching that. I could actually spend some time listening. Maybe I'll learn something. It'll help my class. Uh, but then also, uh, you know, on the screen right there, it says at Astro Stevenson. That's my handle on on X. Um, that probably. And then, of course, my my email, Astro Stevenson 11 at Gmail dot com. Uh, the 11 is no coincidence. That was for Apollo 11. My my hero neil armstrong uh but um email i mean and i've often said this now let me just point this out to you um many times on because i've written blogs as well for teach better and i've said it on the show notes on my on my uh, podcast i'll say you know if you have a question or if you, if you want something more or in, if you're interested in this topic and want to discuss reach out to me and you know what people really don't i think right. this is human nature though and um, i would encourage people that when you see those little prompts that you know, if you have a question, I say to my students all the time, don't let that question sit in your brain. Put it out there because you never know if somebody else has that question. Can it help somebody else? Will it help you? So take that bold step. And if it says, hey, email me, reach out, do it. And you never know what might happen as a result. I love that challenge. I think about that a lot. And I really try to be cognizant throughout my day, even if sometimes I'm just reaching out to let a podcaster know I enjoyed their episode or 
you know, mm -hmm. I see a reel on Instagram that was was neat in some way. And I want to reach out to them and say, hey, thanks for thanks for putting this good content out into the world. I think that's another way to be generous, not only to the people that are releasing content that you enjoy, but also be generous to yourself that you get to give a little bit and celebrate the good things in the world. So great, great tie in there, Tim. I really appreciate it. Good. Well, I appreciate the time to do all this. This is a it's such a cool thing to be connected. And it's just one of the best things. You know, I had 31 years of teaching, it, it, it's not because I've been doing it by myself. If I, if I tried to do this for 31 years by myself, it wouldn't have happened. But wow. I've got a good network and uh, and you're part of it. I, I really appreciate that, Tim. I consider you a part of my network as well. And I always, always appreciate seeing you on my calendar. So I'm so glad we were able to do this this morning. <laughs> Friends, I know that you have a very wonderful Tuesday ahead, but please make sure you take on the challenge that Tim has provided you with this morning. There's some great things that we can do here as a community to better this field and leave it better than when we entered it. And so I appreciate you all being a part of that journey. Please reach out to Tim. And if you have any issues reaching out to Tim, just direct message me or anybody on the team and I will get you connected to him. It's a very easy thing for us to help facilitate. So we really appreciate that. Also, don't forget to head over to teachbetterpodcast.com and have uh, a little look at Tim's podcast over in the Teach Better Podcast Network. So, Tim, thank you again for joining us and everyone else. We hope you have an amazing day ahead. Bye, guys. Thanks, Mary. Hey, Teach Better community. Thank you so much for joining the Teach Better Today morning show every single weekday at 7 a.m. Eastern. We have so many resources for you outside of this live stream at teachbetter.com, including blogs, podcasts, and professional development that will bring our team to your school. Wherever you are listening from this morning, please make sure you are sharing and celebrating the incredible educators in this world. And hey, if you are listening over on a podcast to Teach Better Talk, we would love a five-star review. <laughs> the comments are always so entertaining. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow.